What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Lost Records Journal, Player One vs. Was Lost Records Focus Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adnan. My host, Adam, is here. Adam, you here? I'm here. It's squeaky time. You have to say that so early on. You get demonetized, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, it's okay. You said it's just a fine statement made by a, a, a soccer coach. A legendary soccer coach. Legendary former soccer coach. Put respect on the name. I'm, I'm, like, I'm glad you said soccer coach and not football manager. Well, I have to because you're like a main you know, American demographic and it kills me every time I call it <laughs> soccer as well. Um, but no, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> but we're back for the Lost Records Journal. It's our last episode. This is the last Lost Records Journal episode of the month. We've done one earlier this month. So yes, this is yes. going to lead up, coincide towards Halloween. So thank you for joining us as always. If you are new here, one, <laughs> if you are new here, one quick time as well, please do drop a subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, like the video, and share with your friends. Helps support the channel, helps keep up to date with the channel, helps keep up to date with all the Lost Records content we do. And Lost Records Journal is available on all podcast services who are available on Spotify with a video version with our Apple podcast. So please do go over there, rate us, subscribe. It helps keep help support our podcast and also as well it gets you instant access as soon as these episodes become available uh, we have over 50 followers now on spotify we have eight five star ranks so thank you so much for that it's appreciated um and obviously strange cast as well has just hit 30 ratings as well which is amazing so thank you so much and strange cast if you haven't followed that that is our other sister podcast this one which covers everything that covers life is strange deck nine don't nod so do check that out and it's well worth checking out as well for content because that'll be back later this month um Adam, before we um, start as well, just a quick two PSAs as well. Yeah. Because I know some people have been asking us and they're saying there's certain conversations we want to have about Life is Strange Double Exposure. And it's like, but basically we're holding off because there'll be a review episode in November where we obviously we'll dig into a lot of things. But yes. in itself, me and Adam have very much said quite explicitly we're not covering every anything from the first two chapters of double exposure like anything inside it so that might even include things that have become a bit more mainstream in terms of news we will have to kind of talk about some things because michelle has tweeted on the saturday we're recording on the sunday he's tweeted a lot of things about life is strange so um you know we will have to cover those and obviously we'll try them on the surface value of the conversation i'm not trying to dig too much into spoilers and stuff but and I've, I've been doing this with the post as well adam it's like you know it's like i've had to like sometimes use that secret of secrets of caledon post because it's kind of become mainstream some of the conversations are happening <coughs> there um mm -hmm. so that's why we're not doing it just an fyi for that and also as well before we carry on as well like we're far away from the lost the next strange cast episode but like please please like behave yourself be respectful to people online mm. like like me and adam were talking about this off podcast as i said we're recording the sunday michelle has tweeted on the saturday michelle is now making the news for gaming outlets because he's basically telling people not to harass or send threatening messages to deck nine developers like please like whether you agree or not with what's happening the direction etc the deck nine developers are not the people that you know are, are on the receiving end of your really incurring wrath that you're trying to suggest because criticism and also threatening messages are two different things you can criticize something you have every right to have criticism and yeah. what i don't like is when people are saying i'm being shut down from criticizing something and it's like this 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 and that and it's like well no because if you're borderline threatening someone and harassing them or like tagging them and sending them messages that is just never acceptable behavior i know this is the lost records journal i know this is not life is strange podcast but it does come into the context of the man who is currently directing Lost Records Bloom Raid has put a very important message out there. He's come out and done really incredible ground, you know, um, damage control of what's happening in the situation because it has been spiraling out of control for two weeks or so, if not even longer. And it's like, you know, a bit of common discourse, a bit of like dignity, a bit of respect for other people. Like, you know, that these Deck Nine developers are contractors. They they work in a studio which has been contracted by Square Enix to make Life is Strange Double Exposure. And no matter how angry you feel, and I don't speak for Michelle, if anything, Michelle has more of a of a stance to take on this, considering he he created those characters along with other people. Like he has more position to feel a certain <laughs> way, whichever way he does or however he feels. Then, for example, other people do. You might have a connection that he built with those characters, but he is, initially created the art for it. So I just put this out as a PSA first. It's like I've heard stories horribly. Uh, I've been happening to people so far, and it's like decency a bit of dignity a bit of respect for people you can disagree and you can be civil about it so you know let's let's just clear the air there quickly i want to put that out as a as an fyi um to start off with um adam anything to add touch grass everybody uh quite honestly 
I'm known on the show to be the one to be aggressive and just like, ah, like veins popping out my neck. Understand this, first and foremost, um, I'm playing a character on this show. Okay. I'm trying to make this show entertaining. So that's why I'm just like um, a lot more exaggerated with my opinions. But never would I ever try to threaten somebody I disagree with. Like any kind of violence like that or any kind of disrespect or uh, any kind of notes of unaliving, that's not okay. You know, I know a lot of game devs. I've spoken to a lot of indie game devs that's oops sorry everybody i've no i've spoken to a lot of indie game devs that don't want to put their actual name in the credits of the game that they've made only for the fact that there's a history of game developers getting death threats Mm -hmm. just because of what what was put into the game that that somebody would put all that work and all that time and not want to be recognized so that they can avoid these kinds of behavior. That's not okay. You should be proud of the work you do. You should be proud. Whether or not you agree with it or not, someone should say, I put the work in. I put the time in writing the game. And whether you disagree with it or not, this is who I am. And if you don't like it, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, buddy. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Just put it away. Just go on. Play Neva. Neva just dropped. Play Doc Detective. There's other games. So if you don't like it, play something else. Like Lost Records that we're gonna talk about pretty soon. Exactly. I'm I'm sick of it. I, like we were talking again. We were talking about this off podcast, and I'm just like, I'm so sick of hearing this on on toxic behavior. And it's not the. It, it's a very small percentage of the Life is Strange mm. uh, community. It's a very small percentage. Let's be, let's be real here. Mm-hmm. Um. But that small percentage is very loud, mm-hmm. and I just I'm I'm sick of it, dude. I'm sick of it. Play something else. Play something else, dude. Like Lost Records. I don't know. Yeah, I'm tired, dude. I'm so tired. I got other st- stuff I got to do. You know what I mean? But whatever. Whatever. Yeah, you, you can vote more with your feet by not buying the game or supporting it. Or whatever. That is more of a decision with that. But. As I've said before many times, as a publisher, that's like the arm of this. And I feel like sometimes we scream into the echo chamber on on these podcasts where we tell you about the influence of a publisher and what they've been doing and how different it is. And, you know, we have been wrong. You know, it's human error to be wrong. No, no journalist, no any no person has ever been right about everything. But there's certain things that have aged like fine wine, some of the things that we've been repeatedly mm. saying that we've learned and spoken about. And it's very clear that the publisher has more of an influence. And when you're directing your influence to the Deck Nine developers rather than the Square Enix publisher and i'm not saying you go out yeah. there and harass them or you know send them threatening messages but you put your voice out to those people because they're the people that are going to hear you and express those kind of like frustrations etc so yeah it's just a, a psa to start with because i think it just has coincided perfectly with what michelle has said and it's just it's been quite frank just the most strangest behavior i've seen from some people um like you can't just behave like that i think it's acceptable so um touch yeah. grass suck on some copium like I'm, I'm, I'm sick of you people, man. Like I'm, yeah. I'm tired of it. Um, kind of like, kind of like uh, Philadelphia players talking to Philadelphia fan base, um, which by the way, has been multiple occasions. Uh, I'm, I'm bleeding Philly all the way through. I know I got a North Dakota team on, but um, yeah, there's been multiple <laughs> Philadelphia players that just hate the fan base and Philadelphia mm-hmm. is just a tough city to play in, but no, it just, I hate those fans too. I hate, I hate Philadelphia fans. I hate like not hate, but it's like, I I'm just sick of it, man. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it, dude. Uh, Especially during election season. I'm sick of it, dude. We, we will come on to Michelle's comments in the next Strange House episode. It's, it's I thought we were going to gonna talk about the election. Oh no, man. You want to get me riled up? <laughs> but let's not get into that conversation. Um, ah. We we will address Michelle's comments in the next Strangecast episode. I imagine it'll be a large chunk of it because he said a lot of things in, in different tweets to different people. So, uh, you know, if you are looking forward to hearing that, you know, just let you know about that. Well, speaking of which, Adam, we have been in this as well. Should we speak about Lost Records? Um, because this is a, a big story, if anything, to start with. Yeah, no, I'm just um, I'm just trying to change my light so that, like, we we don't, you know, we don't talk about the election or anything like that. So I'm just trying to change my light color. Okay, cool. Okay, we're good. Yeah, Adam, first piece of news. We're going here. So 
this is going to be a bit more of a don't nod slash lost records episode because we're going to alleviate some of the pressure on the streamcast <clears> with some of the news that's happening. This was a big story that happened in the week that we're recording. So obviously, here's a story. It's from Games Industry Biz. They've recorded the press release, which is that don't nod admits quote unquote challenging times as re as a quote unquote re reorganization project and co puts up to sixty nine jobs at risk. French mm -hmm. studio insists reorganization is extremely necessary. So this is from Rick, Vicky Blake. You put. Don't Nod is reorganizing, putting up to 69 jobs at risk in its latest financials. The French studio acknowledged the quote-unquote impact this project may have on all our employees, end quote, but insisted securing our company's resources and restoring its ability to perform uh, more in an increasingly competitive and selective industry is extremely necessary. Um, amid deteriorating results and despite the actions already taken, the company is now compelled to consider a reorganization project to safeguard its competitive competitiveness in an increasingly demanding and competitive ecosystem end quote and another mm. quote here from don't know which was that this project could impact don't know workforce in france and may affect up to 69 jobs um, an initial exchange that took place um, with the employee representative bodies and information consultation process with the same bodies will be subsequent will subsequently be initiated regarding this project and quote that mm. um, the project which don't know once again stressed was quote unquote likely to impact and quote its workforce seeks to quote unquote rationalize the number of the company production line, strengthen the role of its editorial committee to better make to better meet market expectations, restore more organization ability, align technologies for greater efficiency, and secure the company's financing. End quote. Mm. Oscar, Gil Oscar Gilbert, don't know, chairman and CEO, said, "I quote: Our half-year results for 2024 to reflect uh, reflect the economic underperformance of our last release, despite solid ratings on Metacritic, as well as accounting the impact of the decision we had to take. The initial performance support measures announced last spring no longer seem sufficient to maintain the comp company's competitive competitiveness." As a result, today we resulted uh, we presented a reorganization project to the employee representative bodies, which could set Don't Nod on a new development trajectory. I'm fully conscious of the impact this project may have on all our employees, securing our company's resources and restoring its ability to perform more in an increasingly competitive and selective industry is ne extremely necessary, end quote. Uh, in today's statement, Don't, ins Don't Nod insisted, quote unquote, management is committed to fostering dialogue with employee representatives with the aim of reaching agreements on accompanying social measures, including the possibility of a voluntary redundancy plan should the project be adopted, end quote. It also confirmed that, quote unquote, in these challenging times, end quote, Don't Nod will continue developing lost records, Bloom and Rage, and unannounced projects P10 and P14 scheduled for release before the end of 2027. Um so that's the news. Adam, the other two pieces we'll do as a separate one, which will be about the union. But um, just before we start this conversation as well, um, I have just pulled this up as well for context. So obviously this came in light of this part, which was the fact that Donut had suspended its trading um, on Thursday. It had basically just gone out there and said, um, stop the trading on the stock market. Um, and this was a, a company, I believe, with a press release, which is here. So yeah, it just says in a press release here where it said that, uh, the company has asked for a suspension of its stock to be traded um and also um you know it will resume once it's done so the stock is now trading again as well but that was just piece of the news and i think let me just point out one more thing here quickly uh, before we get on here du -du -du. there it was so in in the after hours in the aftermath of uh don't nod announcing that news the reorganization project the stock is now at that time at least when i was reporting on the friday it is trading just above a euro so it's at its 52 week lows. It's at its all time lows as well. Um, so it's dropped significantly. Don't know in its stock value in the in the aftermath of that. I dropped about 10. percent I think minimum on the day um, that news happened. Um, so Adam, if anything to start with, I think we were very clear about when we covered the don't know financial results on Strangecast that I think we both said in unison that this would lead to layoffs because. Um, or it would potentially lead to layoff because Don't Nod has over 350 employees. And we were both saying that when these things were happening, where they were writing down the assets for Juson and writing down the assets for Banishers, and they were canceling certain projects or like, you know, ending the initial phase of certain things, it felt like that was going to happen. Um, I just wanted to know what you felt about this, the reaction to the news. Now, um, I'm I'm a smart, smart brain person, the birth person, college degree. Um, now for, for people who are not as smart as, as me, and I am totally aware of how the, the market of stock does, 
why why does it matter about the stock news with don't nod because i i already know about stocks but explain to the other people well so i'm the other people and i'm so stupid i don't know anything about stocks it, it it's weird because basically it depends on 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 a market's reaction so for example sometimes when like a company lays people off like meta the mm. stock would usually go up because basically it's going to be reflected in their earnings so the next earnings obviously the cash flow will, will like will you'll have like less names on the books so for example if you cut 69 people from your company you're going to be uh, that company is keeping that in terms of revenue because obviously they're paying their salaries and they're going to keep that money back on the on the book so usually in response a stock will go up it's not binary by the way it'll go up when a job layoffs happen but because of how don't not has done its thing it's basically again reshifted its expectations so the stock has yeah. reacted in the sense that it's looked at it and it's like you know oh oh look at the pipeline here it's like there's two games coming out before the end of 2027 lost records comes out in 2025 so it's kind of like negatively reacted to the news because it knows that this is news that's you know affecting the company so for example when don't not paused its stock on thursday and i'm speaking for a layman i'm not a full stock expert or financial expert i'm just speaking from the experience that i know so far when don't not paused its stock on thursday I think they did it because they wanted to stop volatility on the stock because obviously if this news was happening in real time, the stock could easily drop below a euro. And I don't know, for example, if um, I don't know how it works in European stock markets, for example, but I know, for example, okay. if, if stocks on the US stock exchange fall below a dollar, for example, they can face the potential of being delisted completely from the stock market. So it's mm -hmm. like, I think they probably did it with the <laughs> expectation, let's pause the trading let's reveal to the investors and also the general public this is what's happening with a clear plan rather than saying we're laying off 69 people and also restructuring all these projects so i think like they've all gone ahead with that and i think there's a part in the actual press release where oscar gobert uh, saying that they've obviously spoken to the board board of don't know um to approve this um you know reorganization project etc so that's the kind of like response to it um mm. so yeah just a layman's okay. possession someone might be able to explain it better if you can obviously please leave it in the comments just yeah, I have, I have a brain of a toddler, uh, as we've established. Um, no, this, again, I, I kind of saw this coming. You know, obviously, this is happening with a lot of uh, different companies. In fact, uh, it's now being reported that Riot is going to be having layoffs pretty soon. Um, yeah, Riot's kind of having layoffs. Uh, that was actually reported live on the Kind of Funny uh, podcast because Jason Schreier came on, the Kind of Funny, and he got a text saying like what and he's like saying like uh before i can report this um i have to see if there's any news and then like mm -hmm. the next show they talked about like yeah jason trier got the news that riot was having indeed some layoffs um they were hearing um a lot of different companies having layoffs and mm. you know i don't want anybody to be laid off mm -hmm. what it comes down to is just a lack of leadership and when i say that it's just that the pandemic was really good in terms of a uh, financial market. Like, Oh wow. The video game market is booming because people are stuck at home. Oh mm -hmm. my God. It's, it's going to be so good. I I'm so glad that people are miserable and stuck at home so that we can financially benefit. Yum, yum, yum. Um, and they saw that boom and it, it just like, Oh, nothing can fail here. So they started to make new hires, create new jobs, um, and they thought that this financial wave would just keep rising and rising and rising until it just stopped and they can't pay their employees anymore. They, they create all these jobs and now in the future they can't pay for it. It's a lack of leadership. Yeah. It's, uh, unfortunately happening in the skateboarding industry too. Um, there was a huge interest in skateboarding once again in the pandemic. And so skateboard companies were rising, 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 creating new jobs. And then poof, now skateboarding is going mm -hmm. down down the hill kind of like um tony hawk's down downhill jam and there's gonna be layoffs in the skateboarding industry pretty soon there's already layoffs in uh, a lot of companies i respect um mm -hmm. in skateboarding industry but what i'm trying to get at is that it's unfortunately not surprising that this is happening mm -hmm. and with 350 people working at don't not 350 people like that is insane to me mm. i'm pretty sure bethesda bethesda game studios has around 350 maybe 400 people and that's bethesda don't not is just like like wild bethesda to me that has 450 as of november 2023 um, so we 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Actually, there's mm-hmm. another link here which says that as of t- November, as of September 2024, it has approximately 602 employees across okay. six continents. Okay, so that might be Bethesda. Is that Bethesda Game Studios or Bethesda? Bethesda Soft? Game Studies. Game Studios. Sorry. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, but yeah, no, that that's what I'm trying to get at. It's just like 350 people at Don't Not mm-hmm. is kind of shocking to me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's um, it's just a lack of leadership. We're going to get that pretty soon. But uh, it's the same way where I got laid off at my at my restaurant. It mm-hmm. was a lack of leadership. It was a lack of understanding where the financial gains are. And so people suffer. And the ones who are in leadership get on scot free. When I was laid off personally, uh, I'm not going to say which restaurant it was, but uh, I was laid off. You know, everybody got laid off. We all lost our jobs. But guess what? All the people who are at the top, they're like, well, we have to cut you off so that we can keep making money. It's kind of in the same way they laid off, like the way we cancel a Netflix subscription. You yeah. know, it's like the Netflix subscription leaves, but I get more money in my bank account. That's the same thing with people on the top. We lose our jobs, but we're the canceled subscription. And True. that's what this is happening. Um, it sucks to think about it that way, but that's the reality of it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it does. It, it's yeah. not. Uh, no, that that's just. No, I was just saying that was just that's just my thoughts. I, I think it's dumb, but it's not surprising. I, I kind of expected this in terms of like when we were talking about it on the other podcast when we said it because again it was our initial response of being like, um, there's going to be layoffs. There's going to be layoffs. I don't know because like if they're not making the money, like how they're going to afford all these employees and. It's not something that we were like excited about or jumping out and saying like, you know, it's going to let people off. It's more about like, it's just the the cold reality that settles in when we're talking on that podcast. And I think when I saw this, I was kind of like a little bit worried because like there were other things that could have happened, Adam. It's like when they're stopping that stock from pausing, it's like, was this a potential triggering of a buyout from a company? Was it, for example, even more so one of the things I read, which was I kind of like completely glossed over was the fact that was it Tencent withdrawing stake or something because Tencent owns over a 30% stake in Don't Not, for example. Is yeah, like, I'm that... not happy about that. Yeah. Neither am I. I'm, 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 I've always been very critical of like the, the Chinese companies owning like massive stocks and games and same with like Saudi Arabia having an investment in Nintendo. It's like, it's just not, you know, I don't really need that, see that, but like, you know, when Tencent has that much of a stake and it's putting that much money in and it's withdrawing its presence in certain studios and then influencing other ones. So you've seen the Ubisoft news recently. It's like, if they dropped all that, if they'd like withdrew a massive stake from their position, it would be like almost like quite scary to see what happened to Don't Know because it's lost a massive investor that's sitting in the background. Um, so it feels like they've kind of been push comes to shove. It's like all hands are on deck now. It's kind of like moving things forward. And I think the attention and why it's coming to this podcast is the fact that Lost Records, Bloom Rages, the expectation has gone tenfold for me now. It wasn't just a project which like, you know, hope the success It's now tenfold expectation because Banishers has not succeeded. That had a triple A publisher behind it. Juson yeah. has not commercially succeeded. That has the, the conversation. Which is a that... shame about Juson. Like that yeah. is a Go go play Jusant if you haven't. Shame on you, dude. It's the climate that you isn't haven't. It? Have you played Jusant yet? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Double exposure to my Shame on you. Play. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it, it's it's the climate of the video game industry. It's just not helpful to any no, small publisher. Their market their marketing can't cut through, and that's the worrying part with even lost records because it's like the expectation is huge for the game to succeed now. And don't nod. Let, let's be honest. What don't nod hasn't had a major success since Life is Strange War. Like Vampire yeah. has been a steady success, but it never really garnered the same Life is Strange success. Everything else has been met with good acclaim or met with mixed receptions, etc. But nothing has generated a massive return on the scale. Of Life is Strange, and it's like that's why it's like such a, 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 a like my hypothesis has been like shattered a little bit in terms of don't nod. I've spoken about it on Strange Cast. I do own a very small position in don't nod. I like it's very low end of like you know in terms of the value where it's at, at the minute but it's like i'm sitting there thinking like how are you really going to dig yourself out of this hole now because like the expectation is on lost records it comes out in february next year where it comes out in a stacked area of games coming out can Which you really sustain in the last that? episode yeah you, yeah you you point you rightfully point that out in terms of like you know the, the amount of games that are coming out in that window and they're targeting those people they're not targeting life is strange fans because nine i, I would probably say like eight out of ten life is strange fans are probably going to follow them because they've kind of been excited by it but you know they still have marketing expectations kind of like 
get those people invested into Life is Strange, but it's such a hard thing to cut through with marketing. It's like so hard to cut through. Um, and, I, and I just feel quite like, you know, I feel sorry for like Don't Know in certain parts because it's like they they just wanted that independence from like making Life is Strange games, etc. going out there. And it's just not succeeded for the time being. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just that. And Adam is looking as well here. I think Don't Know's peak on the stock was over about over about 30 euros i think it was it's just over 30 euros it's about a- april 2018 august 2018 mm. yeah august 2018 it was about 30 plus euros i think it's gone up a bit more than that that was near its peak and in 2024 it's now trading at one euro 23 mm. so it's, it's dropped it's dropped from about 31 euros down to about one euro in terms of its stock value each like stock and that that is a market that's like a market collapse on the level of like ubisoft at the minute where ubisoft's market value has just been shredded so yeah the expectation is huge now like there's no room for error there's no it's almost like as you point out again on the other podcast where it's like it's almost like the the the, the chips are on michelle's table be like you know hopefully you do something that makes this company like a lot of returns like once again he's being put in this position and just like he I, I fear well, for the future of Donod because, you know, how many more games does Michelle have? Yeah. You know, like, that's the thing. It's like, I'm not trying to say that his career is coming to an end already. He's, he, if anything, he's at his prime. But at the same time, if he's, if Donod's going to have a legacy and he just keep counting on Michelle, it, where's that future going to go? You know? Yeah. Like, in itself as well, I would argue the expectations are even. Um, bigger in terms of Michelle, where it's like you are basically getting to the point with Michelle where before that, when Life is Strange was coming out, there was never an expectation for Life is Strange to be a massive success. Um, it yeah. turned into that. But the expectation now is on Michelle to make a success of that game, like make Lost Records, because he has a reputation. He's worked on Life is Strange. It's had all these successes. And it's like now again, Don't Know is not in the best position financially, like in terms of its position as a company. And I'm again like, Jesus. And in itself as well, as you said, Adam, he might even leave and go to another studio. Who knows that? There's no, you can't rule out that possibility. If someone came along yeah. with another developer, you know, he's got life, is, he's got don't know DNA written into him with the way he's worked and stuff. But there's no guarantee he might not even leave and go into another company or something. Like, you can't rule out that possibility. It can always happen in these kind of things. So, yeah, it's yeah. a, you know, go and start his own quite, studio. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you never know what could actually happen in, in the day and age of the modern gaming industry. It's so weird to kind of re- read through. Um, so, you know, hopefully, hopefully don't know can weather this storm in some way, shape or form. Um, Adam, should we mm-hmm. go into our next piece of news? Can we link into it? Oh, yeah. So we got it here. So this is in relation to the last piece of news. So this French union has urged don't nod workers to strike over layoffs and quote, unquote, reorganization plans. So I'm not going to read the full all of it because we've read parts that other part of the um, the press release <coughs> that we did, which we covered on this. This is going back to games industry biz. So. It says here, the French union that represents employees at Don't Know is calling for workers to strike in response to a quote-unquote reorganization, end quote, plan that puts up to 69 jobs at risk. Um, we've talked about that part here, but it, it says here, however, in a statement on its website, I'm not going to pronounce its name. I'm just going to call it the ST, STJV, um, accused Don't Know's management of hiding behind the quote-unquote economic situation, end quote, and quote-unquote, the very competitive market, end quote, forcing staff to pay for their leaders' mistakes. And the SJTV said here in a statement, and I quote, the Don't Nod unit, the Don't Nod Union section and the SJ, STJV as a whole cannot tolerate that the responsibility for the company's failures be placed on its employees. We call on all Don't Nod workers to mobilize now to safeguard their jobs and working conditions, end quote. So I'm not going to go into other parts of here. I'm going to go into this part, which I can actually, yeah, so. Adam, if I pull up this one, I'd pull this up for context to show you um, because this is like mm-hmm. the scale of where a union can hit but big. And this again from Games Industry Biz, but here it is as well, which is like 700 plus Ubisoft France staff walk out on a three-day strike in dispute over working, home working and pay. So again, this is the S, um, SJ, STJV, which has been involved. I'm going to just read it higher. So over 700 Ubisoft France staff have walked out on a three-day strike in dispute over home working and home working and pay. Ubisoft's France-based workers were called to participate in a three-day strike over a dispute around the company's return to office policy last month. French video game un- union work- workers union, um, the STJV, uh, said that uh, Decat to be 
in the office at least three days per week going forward was, quote unquote, the straw that broke the camel's back, end quote. So mm. according to Lamonde, STJV called the strike when Ubisoft management did not respond to its complaints. STJV's, um, STJV's uh, Clement Monti- Montigny told agency Fran- France Presse uh, the company had uh, ren- re- renegade? Renegade? What's that word? Uh, renaged. Uh, ren- renaged. Had ren- renaged? I've never seen renaged. that word before. <laughs> yeah. Eleanor, <laughs> that's like renaged. On promises about homeworking and quote unquote calls into question the way they organize their lives, end quote. Um, at the time, hmm. the Assassin's Creed developer told its staff it believed the three day requirement would be <laughs> would boost creativity and teamwork, but still quote unquote respect individual circumstances, end quote. Again, a bit more context there because Ubisoft is also quite in a difficult position with its marketing. And Adam, just quote one more thing as well, just for a bit of context, because we do know about the SJTV as well, because mm. we did cover it early this year, which was here as well. I'm not going to read the full article out, but we read about it in February, it accused Don't Know of, um, you know, of, about the welfare of its staff in France. Um, we covered this on a Strange Cast episode, which you can go and check out in the past. Um, this was about February, so it'll be in one of the because in the March episode or one of the two March episodes. So I just wanted to bring that up as a kind of like a referral point because we have talked about the SJTV before. Um, Adam, again, mm. not the best news for Don't Nod This. No. No. No, not really. And that's the other thing. It's like I do appreciate um, the SJ, STJV? STJV? SJTV. Um, SJTV. Um, saying that they shouldn't pay for uh leadership's incompetencies, which is again what when I got laid off myself on a very small scale at a restaurant, a very um one scale restaurant. But like we all paid for like the company's mistakes. So like the leadership mm-hmm. made mistakes. The leadership didn't market, the leadership didn't uh provide for us. And we had to pay for that. Like we had to lose our jobs and we had to scramble and find new ways to pay our bills. So like how, why are we at fault for that? And by the way, because I worked at a restaurant, like I didn't get a severance pay. I didn't get severance pay. I didn't get anything, anything like that. Um, Mm -hmm. I got free booze. So that was cool. You know, they gave me, you know, it's like, Oh, here's, here's the key to the wine cellar. Go, go ham. I'm like, all right, cool. I, I do like to drink every now and again, as you saw in the Erica Mori episode. Uh, what the heck are you doing? Right, mess with that. That was me just messing around. <laughs> you just wanted to highlight yourself for a hot second. Oh, um, <laughs> I was gonna come out in the recording now. I can't believe I did that. I was just like, why, why is that then? I was like, ah, okay, we're good. Um, sorry, but that's what I mean, though. It's just like I was <laughs> off when I got laid off because I'm like, why. And I told the owner that to his face. I'm like, that's the most screwed up thing you've ever done, dude. Like, you you just come in here and you just cancel us mm-hmm. and then you go about your day. You know, so go on the SGTV to say that, like, hey, this needs to end. Like, leadership can't keep getting away with this. With Ubisoft. I love how now the Gimo family is like, hey, we should sell off. I'm like, we've been asking for you to leave the company for years now. I've been on a Ubisoft strike since, um, I want to say 2019, probably 2019, I think I I was on my strike. Um, So for five years, we've been asking you, like, step down. And they're just like, maybe we should. And now 700 workers are on strike because of, like, incompetencies for the uh, for the leadership. Uh, Go France. Any American that says, like, oh, French is stupid. Guess what? French know what they're doing with terms of, you know, workers' rights and all that. Also, they have all of August off. What's that about? Can we have all of August off? I hate that. Man, I hate I hate workers, workers' rights here in America. My favorite part as well is like when Adam has like a revelation about anything in Europe that doesn't sound unusual. He goes like straight to the source. So he asked me, he's like, did you know they have work like this off in August? I was like... I was like, no, I didn't. And he's like, I'm gonna go and ask Luke. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, I'm also gonna ask Alejandra as well because like he knows about this stuff. And I'm like, yeah. But it's like, yeah, okay. But no, um, the, the, the French do have this as well because if if I remember correctly, it was like either this year, or last year, they they really pushed back on their state pension increase age. Yeah. Like they like went like full on like protests, and it's like they have like a very strong like certain like obviously I don't know much about French unions. I only know in like the realm of working in the UK and stuff. But it's like. 
the the SJTV did flag certain conditions that came up in Don't Nod in early last year and Don't Nod um you know responded to those and and made its position clear on it but the unions will put pressure on them now as well because it's like Don't Nod has put this kind of position down of like we're going to cut up to potentially 69 jobs because that might mm-hmm. have to happen but then a union pushback could also cause even more damage as well um I think the only thing that I can say in terms of like Don't Nod if anything at least for them, in in terms of how you can talk talk about their hierarchy, they'll probably be happy the fact that the the Canadian arm isn't being affected right now because that's where all the production is being put onto lost records, Bloom and Rage at the minute. But obviously, if mm-hmm. for example the France strike happens, what happens if their Don't Nod team in France, who's doing the social media, stops acting on them? Then it cuts back the market and has an impact on that. So, yeah, I, I think unions are both like you know. Uh, especially for obviously bigger like uppers like you know big management they don't like them but like for re- representation of workers and their rights it's like they actively play a role in helping them and i think it obviously shows for example of ubisoft which has been affected that on a bigger scale because ubisoft is a lot bigger than don't not for example and you can see the impact that it's had there with the pushback really hard and significantly um yeah i think um this is a this is a really like you know i was saying to your podcast adam is like deck nine and don't not are just both in very very precarious situations in terms of their their studios their positions that everything that's happening around them and again they're not alone as you said with riot as well like there's so many places where it's like you know it's going to yeah. be like a it's like it feels like a pulsating shock going throughout the industry constantly to each publishing arm and like developing arm um so i'm kind of like interested to see how this affects things because as i said before this could have a big knock-on effect on lost records as marketing because whilst they do have resources in canada they do rely on their french team to help them out in terms of the social media etc so you can't take anything for granted yeah. here no yeah you're right you're absolutely right i'm always right anyway yeah. <laughs> should we move into our next piece of news <laughs> yeah let's, let's do it okay adam so this hasn't been shared yet it could be shared on our social media by then but mm. i've been snooping i've been nosy mm. as i usually do but this person popped up so this is julian Stamboule. I hope I got your name wrong. I'm sorry if I got yes. it wrong. But we're going to call you Julian from now. So Julian, I spotted, who's been working on Lost Records Bloom and Rage. Mm. So mm. Julian put here as a little status update saying, who's got hat hair and um, and a part in Lost Records Bloom and Rage? This guy. You best yeah. believe I'm going to stream it this when it comes out. Top tier through the glass photography by the producer herself, Kathy Vincelli. Catherine Vincelli. Yes. Um, Kathy V, whichever variation you want to put it as. Uh, huge thanks to Don't Nod for having me. Can't wait to play it. So there's Julian. And Julian's the only other actor that I know so far who's done something in terms of working on Lost Records, uh, Bloom and Rage, because obviously we have our four actresses that we know, uh, or four actors, if anything, better way to put it, four actors. And Julian is here, as you can see him on Instagram as well, um, which we found as well. So. I just wanted to share that as a quick thing, because Adam, as, as we said as well, it seems like things are picking up now, because um, obviously the actors have been doing their mocap stuff, they keep doing it, they've been doing in the booths as well, in terms of their audio, we know Philip Bark is constantly flying around, obviously working on the direction, but it seems like this actor is now involved as well, and it's a male actor, because we haven't actually seen, technically mm. speaking, a male talking character, we have seen one, one character, I think there was a male character outside the diner in one of the trailers, but it's like... yes. We haven't actually seen anyone else talk that isn't thingy. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you as a little update where I was like, oh, actually, this is interesting. Yeah. No, it's um, it's a fun little find you had there. So I'm interested to see. It looks like he would be at like a bar because they, they, he had like a stool. So maybe like he's probably um in the future, like in that bar scene. So mm-hmm. uh, probably a character you can interact with in that. I'm going to guess on that. Yeah, it could, it could potentially. I, I don't know. if I don't think it's going to be a... Oh, it's not leading role. <laughs> so there's four, yeah. four characters already leading. We just it'll be interesting to see which characters they do play, but I kind of wanted to include it in the in the podcast as well because it gives people like up to date information of things that are happening. It probably will appear on our social feeds at some point in the next couple of days. So mm-hmm. by the time this episode comes out, you've probably seen it, but I wanted to flag that up. Um Adam, should we go into our last piece before we go into our main topic? Uh absolutely, definitely. So obviously we're going to none other than himself, studio creative director at Donor Montreal, Michel Coke. That's right. The big gaffer himself at yes. Donna Montreal, the Lost Records Bloom Ray director. And he put, if you like these four films, you'll like our game. So as yes. you can see there, a bit of a reference for Lost Records Bloom and Rage. 
four different pieces is that the is that the craft top right the 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 top right is the craft the top left is ladybird which is an interesting pick Mm. i know the bottom right is american beauty i don't know yeah i don't know the bottom left i don't know bottom left either i'm gonna quickly go traversing here here we go wait this is chris yeah ladybird on the yeah the craft uh yeah no david lynch so Hmm. yeah david lynch with the craft but yeah, Lady Bird is definitely an interesting one. Um, I've only seen it. Oh, here oh, we go. There we go. Twin Peaks. Denoka 29. Okay. Thank you for this, for the assist. Oh, Air American Booty. Let's go. Bang. Let's so wait, is go, that Twin dude. Peaks bottom left? Yeah, apparently. But Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. Ah. Uh, by the way, as well, I will watch I'm on my on my bucket list of this year is to watch Twin Peaks because I've I've but and, and yes, I know it has a huge life of strange influence. Yes, I know it impacts the de- don't know developers but i've kind of like left off it for the moment because like my my life is going to flash before my eyes when i watch twin peaks i'm like is yeah. that it I'm like is that yeah. it but i have obviously heard it's had a massive influence with things but um american beauty really caught my eye though i was like that's a really interesting pick out of all the like what is that I'm yeah because like, like with ladybird i can understand because it's um i don't know if you've ever seen it it's on no. it's a netflix movie um and it's about like, you know, teenage drama, not teenage drama, but like teenage growth, like growth yeah. as is like growing. So I'm like, yeah, OK, the craft, of course, with the spooky natural kind of stuff. Cool. Um, Twin Peaks. Come on, obviously. Um, American Beauty. That See, that's, that's an one. interesting one. I'm like, why? What are you trying to say about that? What are we trying to say about this? So um, it might have to do with like the actual tension in American beauty. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. it's like full on tension, you know, but like there's some moments in it where you're just like, what's going to happen next. But no, it's an interesting one. That's yeah. an interesting. So let me uh, pull up um, here. Okay. So here's what's interesting. And now, now I'm like pulling up the actual quote of the movie. Right. A sexually frustrated suburban father has his midlife crisis after becoming infatuated with his daughter's best friend. Even, okay, even with that, that's what I mean. Like, even with this um, movie description on IMDb, mm-hmm. what is this game going to be about? Like, <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, big question, isn't it? Because like, unless it's, yeah. unless it's, unless he's, unless it's, um, maybe the the idea of what beauty represents and it's like the what what we see because obviously he has those kind of moments during the, in the film where he looks at his uh daughter's friend and he sees her in like some sexualized way and maybe it's something to do with that where it's like the kind of the way that people see certain the characters in in the game but even then when i say maybe. it like even then i'm like what what that's a re- that's the one that out of all four of them obviously i didn't know all of them but that was the one where i looked at it, i was like american beauty and i'm like that's really interesting it's like what's that kind of Mm. Yeah. No, is it because uh, yeah, in the comments as well. He, yeah, because in the comments he did say "Stand by me" as well. Someone said like "Stand by me," and he's like, "Yeah, that's obviously an influence." And we've talked about that for quite a while. Sure. Stephen King, etc. Yeah. But American Beauty is a very, very like. In, I do actually want to watch that film again. It's got he who must not be named in there as well. Um, uh, but it's like, yes. it's yeah, yeah it's, it's, I think it's a pretty um the some scenes that are very difficult to watch now when you know what what he's actually who he actually is. But in terms of like watching that film. I don't actually know what the the huge inspiration is, but I'm very interested. I, I I hope he tweets about it though when it comes out of the game. I want to know what he's actually like seen in terms of like the power rails because that's a really out there. As you said, the other ones all have similarities in my opinion. So like yeah. tw- obviously Twin Peaks, The Craft, da, 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 you know all these other all the other ones are fine, but the American Beauty is the one that stands out. I'm like, hmm, that's mm-hmm. interesting. That unless it's uh, unless it's down to perception and how we perceive things and what we see is infatuation, something along those lines, potentially that could be interesting enough for it. But then also it has, it does have an adult mechanic as well. This part of the game as well. Lost records. It has like got an adult part of the relationship thing that you have. So who knows? I'm interested though. Yeah, definitely. Definitely interesting picks there. Okay. Adam next to- yeah. our main topic before we. <laughs> yeah. So obviously like- time. <laughs> that's not the context of what that means as well but anyway i don't know i'm just learning all these british lingos about squeaky bums and chemists and all that so 
Lollipop Man. Life is Strange Double Exposure has made its way into this conversation. Yeah. Um, because we are currently literally in Life is Strange season and the swing of things. And it's topical because obviously there's a lot of drama within Life is Strange Double Exposure. Again, we won't be referring to anything that's in the Ultimate Edition or any specific portion within the game. If you somehow manage to avoid any spoilers, then God bless you, because I don't know how you've done that in the day and age of what it is. But there will be mention of certain news pieces that have alluded to this, including, for example, which we'll be obviously talking about in the next Strangecast episode with Michelle's tweets. But there has been a backlash in Life is Strange community. And again, you've been warned here at this point, just to give you a bit of context. There has been a bit of backlash among many other things, about Chloe Price, about Max Caulfield, etc. Um, we told you so, by the way. But anyway, uh, sorry, I can't, I can't keep gloating about that. <laughs> there has been a lot of backlash about that. There's a lot of disenfranchised fans. Obviously, Lost Records has seen a bit of a mm, lift as well. I've seen some people tweeting about it. I've seen people like sharing things. And the kind of topic of the conversation is like, will Lost Records really benefit from Life is Strange's double exposures like unsuccessful rate if it does happen that we don't know if it's going to happen yet the game's not come out yet life is strange double exposure might attract an entirely new fan base for example some people are not might not even care about the stuff that's happening at the minute in terms of the drama with chloe price etc um but that's the conversation i wanted to bring in here Adam, because i think it's very topical because they're out they're out in february next year um lost records late in late next year they were meant to be coming out in this this window per se in q4 and they've been moved out because of Life is Strange. Life is Strange double exposure has been engulfed in controversy. And I think it's just too simplistic to think the idea that Lost Records will immediately benefit from Life is Strange's failure or anything like that. I don't think it's going to be a knock-on effect that's as significant as some people think. It's not like the entire Life is Strange fan base is going to transfer just over to Lost Records. Um, But I think it's a bit of a 50-50 for me at this point. I think there might be some positives, but my kind of conversation goes back to it's a different climate, which is now it's 2024. Mm. It's not 2020, 2015. And that same magic of life is strange. is so hard, hard to capture in now video games, because I would even suggest yeah. to you here as well. Oxen free is a cult cult like status game, isn't it? Uh, Oxen free. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's yeah. got its following. Yeah. It's got, it's, yeah. it's got a good, a good use base. But not even that hit the same level of Life is Strange success because Life is Strange went in like that. It was on Teens React. Jack Skeptica was streaming it. PewDiePie was streaming it. It, it, it was released in Japan, for example. It got yeah. massive success. It was massive. That's like a commercial hit for me, if anything. And yet yeah, Oxenfree's never had that. It's got like a small following. And that's what like Lost Records could potentially get in terms of like a small, like little cult-like following. And it could be beneficial. But it doesn't mean it's going to have the same Life is Strange success. So I kind of wanted to bring the conversation to you where it's like, mm. where do you stand with things? Because you have been completely, completely like disregarding Life is Strange double exposure. Because you're just like, I'm just like, I'm just done at this point. And I feel like, like I've convinced you like through <laughs> through this time. It's like, dude, I don't care about this game anymore. If they if if Square doesn't care about Life is Strange, then neither do I. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, if you're going to put this much lack of care into your franchise then why should i care you know the reason why people watch this show and i'm this is a small tangent here is because we care about things we care about these topics so why should you care about this podcast well we care about this podcast we care about these shows we care about the, the 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 schedule that we're on you know we we care about putting on a good show whereas square is just like it makes money just put out anything, it'll be fine. Just do it. And it's just like, why should I care then? So mm. when it comes to you, like saying like I've become disenfranchised with double exposure, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude. Like I'm I'm so disenfranchised now because I'm just like, okay, another small tangent. I'm currently in the process of getting diagnosed uh for ADHD. Um, and we're just talking about like, it, it, there's going to be levels to this. I'm not sure if I'll even get to the end game because of like how much money and time it takes to get mm. diagnosed. Uh, God bless the U S healthcare system. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, but you know, we're just talking about this and I'm like, at, I'm at a stage in point where just like, if, if I'm not interested in something, I'm going to be honest with who I am. I'm like, I'm just, mm. I dude, I don't have time and my brain does it have the capacity to care about something that I don't care about? So I got to move on from this before my brain goes haywire. Um, 
but yeah, I, that's my small tangent about that. Uh, in terms of the actual main topic, will Lost Records benefit from the double exposure backlash? That's a that's a hard question. It's a loaded question. Even t- it's a loaded question just because one, um, so double exposure is coming out uh, next week as we're mm-hmm. as we're discussing this. It's coming out next week. Um, and it, so it's coming out in October. Then we have okay, so November, December, uh, uh, November, December, January, February. So we have about four months mm-hmm. of space. And in terms of the game market, four months is like four years mm-hmm. right now. There's so many games coming out, and not only that, but you have to market yourself around um live services battle passes now. Like when this when the battle passes are ending, that's where the games are climbing because people are trying to take a break from their certain live live service franchise. Um, and then of course you have February being a loaded month. I'm gonna be playing a ton of avowed. That's just going to be one of my favorite composers ever is composing the game. He just announced that Venus theory. He's going to be composing it. So (laughs) I'm, I'm more excited about about, but the question still stands. Will lost records benefit? I don't know if it's going to necessarily benefit from it because it's coming out four months, but in this game's market, that's a forgettable timeframe. If this was coming out, 2017 four months is four months Mm. like four months is is enough to remember but four months in this current landscape is just way too much time Mm -hmm. to even remember the backlash so it's kind of like i hope it does i hope people see double exposure for what it is and they're like hey the original team is working on something really special here you should go check it out you should pre-order it um and and just like find it for yourself but it's my answer for it is like i really god i hope so that's my answer the other argument i'd make as well even the question that i can see which is that fact that they might not get any extra like support from it they might not get any like extra kind of advantage for it because <clears throat> the people that um who are backlashing against this game especially for people who about chloe price are backlashing they're the people who are going to buy Lost Records anyway, in my mind. Like, 8 out of 10 of them will probably buy it. I know some people who are Life is Strange fans who are a bit like, I'll see a bit more because it isn't actual Life is Strange. It's a different thing, but of, obviously it is made by people who made Life is Strange, so I'm interested. Yeah. Um, But I expect those people who are already, like, switching allegiances, being like, I'm more excited for Lost Records and stuff, they're kind of probably banking on you anyway. And I think that's, like, I think that's the expectation because it's like, I always say this to Adam as well, it's like, I think, like, um, and you said it to me once as well. It's like you, you're like Michelle and Luke don't really bother with you in the sense that they don't have to like get you to kind of cover lost records on your podcast on your channel because you'll do it anyway, yeah. and it's because you're interested in it. And instead, they're going for like a market appeal. So, for example, it's that kind of curse thing where like lost records appears in in the Game Awards trailers, and it's like one of like 50 games that's shown there. And essentially, it's like you're you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, because like for example, if they don't show it there they won't see then there's like 200,000 people that might not see that trailer at one glimpse moment but then also you might show it and 200,000 people think eh okay and then move on from it so it's like you basically you're you're trapped in that kind of like really bad marketing sphere where it's like that's going to be like you know you can't avoid that you have to just do it and it's going to be like if someone sees it great you might catch another one or two people but ultimately I think it just comes down to that conversation with like Lost Records. It's that window they're in, which I'm so dreading looking at because, as you said, the gaming market is going to pick up so much steam in the next two or three months going into the lead of 2025. And, like, my God, it's like those are the people who are playing Assassin's Creed, who are playing Avowed, all these games. They're the kind of people they want to come to their game. And it's like, yeah, you know, hopefully, like, I think if anything, there might be that kind of thing of if they end on a very good high note with a big cliffhanger ending in the first tape it might get enough people going into march being like actually i'll go back and pick it up now because everyone's talking about it, it seems like something's happening i.e life is strange ask it has that kind of momentum push but honestly like i i, I kind of can see that question because i was thinking like will they do it and then i was thinking like no not really because the bigger market is what they're looking for and i feel like yeah. that's why i keep saying why i feel like you know i feel sorry for michelle because it's like the expectation has gone tenfold for me. It's like, there's no doubt about it. Like Lost Records has already kind of like had a big concept. I had a big expectation on it because they greenlit it for a franchise. There was like, a, you know, after the Game Awards reveal, like Luke went on the Xbox Wire, put a post out saying there's going to be more games in the Lost Records universe. 
I don't know. I don't remember many games are getting that kind of thing. But you, again, you built a Canadian arm of the studio. There's an entire Canadian division in Canada. There, it's like they're not going to just give it up after one game. Be like, okay, cool. We've released Flash Records. Pack your bags up, guys. We'll go somewhere else and we'll make a new studio. Yes. Like, that is the. That's like a games industry hub there for like life for Lost Records, like with key members of Life is Strange of the team working on it. So. Yeah, I think the only thing that they can hope for, and I think the only thing that can really do, if anything, with this is that they push through the marketing with it. So amid the backlash that's happening, amid the kind of controversy, they really start pivoting with the marketing, being like, oh, you know, this is this game is here. You should play it, especially in the in the aftermath of the game coming out, Double Exposure. They should really like anchor a little bit more marketing attention, being like, you look at our game, like you're obviously annoyed. If we can kind of just get you a bit interested, you can keep up to date with us for the next couple of months as we get into february 2025 um yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm a little bit you know i'm i'm it's hard man because like i don't i don't sit here like joyfully sitting like trying to predict the end of life is strange because as i said before if that game gets shelved then you lose something yeah. man you lose something special you lose something that might not come back ever again and it doesn't mean that square Enix is automatically going to sell the series they'll just keep hold of the ip if they need to what's the point of them selling it if it has commercial value at later date when they can rebring it back but it's like with lost records there's it's an unknown quantity, man. It's an un- think, think about it in the sense of podcasts as well. Think about Lost Records Journal. Lost Records Journal has has had a basically an establishing foundation base because essentially Strange Cast has been its 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 um has been its um, predecessor in terms of being like, here you go, you have a foundation. So people who listen to Strange Cast will come to Lost Records Journal, not necessarily, but they will come here. But that's why it's done well. So it's like it's gone over fifty followers very quickly on Spotify compared to how strange cast did because strange cast was an unknown quantity to start with and we eventually grabbed people along the way and they've kind of come along for the journey which is obviously yeah. great for us but you know we don't take things for granted because it's like even still there's some people that come up and be like oh i just found your channel like, I'm like, Hello. yeah <laughs> it's like yeah. there we are because that's what we're competing with because there's about 15 million people who are making like life is strange videos like making content people who are bigger etc so you're basically stuck in a market where you're trying to like cut through to other people and you become really ultra niche um yeah i i, I don't think it's going to benefit most but in a nutshell i don't think my kind of like conversation my kind of like critique or even on my own question is that i don't think it's going to benefit a huge amount i think you'll get potentially more disenfranchised people so more disenfranchised life is strange fans might come over to lost records but ultimately i don't think it's going to have a huge knock-on effect i don't think it's going to do completely the the wheel changing because as as i said as well and i think about it when we were talking about it earlier this year i kind of wrap up my last thoughts here was when we were talking about the reveal of double exposure we were like okay if you were set in Montreal, it's like, okay, the worst things that have possibly happened, they've just revealed a Life is Strange game. Great. They've just released it in Q4 2024. Fantastic. And oh, they bought Max back, they bought back Max Caulfield and Hannah <laughs> Tell. And it's like, yeah. I don't know what else could possibly be bad at that's what it's like. Maybe GTA should drop at the same time and like let's see what that was like the trifecta of the worst things that could have happened to Lost Records. Max Caulfield, Hannah Tell comes back, uh, Lost Records, um, double exposure comes out in 2024 a new life is strange game is announced it's like it's like the trifecta of the worst thing that could possibly happen oh actually put ashley birch in there maybe that would have added something else in there if she came back as chloe then it would have been even more devastating for them in terms of the reputation yeah. but yeah i can't I don't, I don't i don't i don't i don't see him help him yeah no i just think that it's just going to be lost records is going to be for the fan base that they've marketed to but i don't think it's going to be a I don't think people who are burnt from double exposure are going to go immediately to lost records. I think they're marketing to a different fan base, you know? Yeah. I think that's a fair, fair take. And I think that's probably a good place to potentially leave this on as well. Maybe we can come back to this and revisit it in in, in due course. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I think we'll wrap up here. If anything, probably the best way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you are new here one last time, please do consider dropping a subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, like the video, share your friends, help support the channel, help you keep up to date with all the content we post and lost records journal is, is available on all podcast services. So you can check us out on Apple podcasts and Spotify. We're on everything. So do check us out, do go and rate us. You can get access to all your content there. And yeah, please do especially rate us as well, especially on Spotify. It does help us with our visibility. Um, so yeah, we're going to wrap up here. Again, Strangecast will be out next week after you get this as well. It'll be out the day after Life is Strange Double Exposure is released. So stay tuned for that. We plan to get a review out in early November as well. So you'll have our full impressions of the game, etc. 
in there. And obviously, again, like Lost Records Journal might be pushed back just for a bit of FYI because of Lost Life is Strange double exposure. Ironically, it might be pushed back the next episode because we're going to do a review of um, Life is Strange double exposure. And that's I've said it enough times there. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the episode. Take care, guys. See you later. Bye. Later.